Welcome to the 11th episode of Hark the Lark. I read this very short book. <laughs> it's Shelby Foote's uh, Civil War Trilogy. This particular one is the third volume. It's Red River to Appomattox. It goes well beyond Appomattox, though. So if you ever wanted to kind of read a little bit more of uh, um, Abraham Lincoln's assassination and even the very end of, of how things worked out for Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, um, it certainly covers lots of things. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of uh, numbers that I got out of here because, wow, out of a thousand pages, you just get some morsels sometimes. So the first one has to do with the supplies that you need to fight a war. And sometimes we don't think about this. I mean, every time you have like a machine gun going, brrr, you have to have bullets to do all that. Well, in the South and the, and the Union in the Civil War, they used copper to make the little... Um, percussion caps. And I just want to just let you know these numbers. It's just kind of amazing. Toward the end of the war, obviously the last uh, third of the war, the Confederacy had about 18 caps a day allotted to the soldiers. In the North, in the Union soldiers had about 100. So 18 caps to 100. That's how many times you can shoot at the enemy so obviously, that's a huge lopsided situation. It is also fascinating to me that toward the end of the war, January of 1865, there were about 180,000 blacks in and had served in the Union ranks. And yet, by January 1st of 1865, with just a few months left of the war, the number of Confederates was 134,111. So to make that a point, there were more blacks in the Northern Army than there were soldiers in the Southern Army. Tough to win wars under circumstances like that. My last thing that I read, it's on page 100, 892 of this big book, um, has to do with an irony that I find uh, that comes out of the mouths of many, many Southerners in the history of the United States. So I'll just say this really quickly. Thomas Jefferson said in the Declaration of Independence that all men were created equal and had inalienable rights. Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Give me liberty or give me death. And Francis Scott Key is the man who authored the Star-Spangled Banner in the War of 1812, wrote The Land of the Free. Here's what I find so ironic. All three of those men own slaves. Can you imagine for just a second being Patrick Henry and announcing that phrase in front of all the slaves you have? Give me liberty or give me death. Gosh, I just kind of wonder what the slaves thought of that. Think of that. It's a very famous phrase said by a slave owner. And so another slave owner that's fairly famous is Jefferson Davis, who um, was the president of the Confederacy and this is a quote out of one of his last speeches. It has to do with how we're resolved in the South to not ever give up. And so it says, If by stress of numbers we should ever be compelled to a temporary withdrawal from Virginia and those of any other border state, again and again we will return until the baffled and exhausted enemy shall abandon in despair his endless and impossible task of making slaves of a people resolved to be free. <laughs> the Union is baffled and exhausted and they're in despair at their endless and impossible task of making the Confederates slaves a people resolved to be free while they own other people? I don't know if it ever strikes you as ironic. It strikes me as ironic. I think actually in the dictionary under ironic, they should have these as examples. And so with that, I will close off this episode of Hark the Lark. And uh, thank you. Thank you.